So today we are going to discuss about uh, inferential statistics. So inferential statistics is, uh, it is actually a third section video. So we are going to discuss about briefly discuss about inferential statistics. So first uh, we will discuss some definitions and second basic approach to computing probabilities or so some how to calculate the simple probabilities and third relations will be among the event so in this case maybe we will explain uh, by using Venn diagram uh, so then conditional probability so conditional probability law so in this case we will briefly discuss about conditional probability applications and also we will discuss that uh, uh, base law base theorem or base law and also finally we will use the counting principle uh, uh, using probability calculations right so first inferential statistics so what is the inferential statistics so it involved drawing conclusion so drawing conclusion uh, about a population based on the information from a sample the population it involves gathering data on a sample of population and also involve analyzing this data in order to make inference about the entire population all right so this is the simple example so in october 2002 abc news board found that 73 percent of americans favor a law that would require every consult in the united states to be test fired First, so law enforcement would have it is ballistic fingerprint in case it is were even used in the crime. So this is just a simple example. Second example: a Starbucks manager examined the amount of brewed coffee sold in the last five weeks in order to guess the demand for this week. So in this case, usually you know population parameters are unknown. So, but in this case, maybe in, in frontier statistic mean. Just we will use this we will select the sample and also calculate the probabilities and also finally we will make conclusion for population so in making the inference about our known population parameters based on the information from sample of the population understanding of likelihood or probability is essential so later we will briefly discuss about how to calculate the probabilities So probabilities or chance are computed relative to the idealistic or perfect world point of view. So to understand the probabilities and hence the population distribution, the concept listed in next few slides are introduced. So usually our probability calculations so for population. So suppose if we provide some probability values for suppose particularly one of the event, so actually the probability for whole population so not in sample but maybe some of the situation will calculate that probability based on the sample information okay so, all right so first to we are going to discuss some definitions so first definition experiment so conducting an activity in generating the data it could be just gathering information or performing an experiment for example toss a fair coin three times uh, and observe the sequence of head and tails so three times tossing a coin so maybe three times tossing a coin mean maybe all three times uh, we can get maybe head or we can get all three times tail or first two times tail third time head or first time tail second time head third time tail okay so we, we have we can try it several ways several outcomes in this case in this example so this is we call this experiment this is one of the experiment uh, so next example is record the ages of randomly selected group of graduate from four-year college so in this case this is age this this is one of the experiment so record the age mean maybe the age possible maybe some of the numerical values Alright, so next de important definition sample space. 
So this is very, very important definition in probability. So sample space is also called outcome space, set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. So if we try to all possible outcomes in set format, we call it that is sample space. For example, for the experiment at tossing fair coin three times. So three times tossing a coin, so we can write eight possible outcomes. So that means first first time cat, second time cat, third time cat. Or oh, first time tail, so okay, sorry. First one, first time tail, second time tail, third time tail. Oh, first time hit, third, second time hit, third time hit. First time tail, second time tail, third time hit. First time tail, second time hit, third time tail. So similarly, we can write this all possible outcome. So this is we call sample space. So usually we denote as, as sample space is capital S. So maybe some of those textbooks use that notation, maybe omega. So that is also maybe sample space notation, but in this uh, presentation, so I am going to use the notation as big as a sample space. All right, so this is another example for the experiment of recording the ages of four year college graduate. The sample space is the set of all real numbers between 10 and 80. So in this case, suppose if you write on the sample space, and also in this case, they given assuming that there is no known four years college graduate because younger than 10 and older than 80. So that means in this case, maybe sample space, we can write 11, 12, 13, 14, up to 79. Okay, so this is another example. The next definition, event. Any subset or part of sample space, we call it, that is event. So we can divide it that is event is simple event and compound event. So simple event mean each individual element of a sample space we call it simple event. Compound event mean any event including two or more simple event. So that is we call it compound event. Next probability. So maybe probability is this definition maybe one word uh, definition this chance of occurrence that is probability all right so in this case this is a notation of chance or likelihood is known as probability the probability values are always between 0 and 1 also inclusive so that means maybe possible 0 or possible 1 the probability of sample space is 1 and the probability of unlikely or improbable event is zero. For example, what's the probability of getting seven in tossing die? So in this case, you know, our tossing tie case, only possible events may be one, two, three, up to six. Seven is not possible. So that's the division that probability should be zero. Okay, or otherwise, another example may be, probability of getting integer in throwing ties. So that's the division that probability should be equal one because maybe your outcomes may be one or two or three or four or five or six. So those are all numbers integer. Okay. So this is very important. Maybe some of the situations suppose if you, if you calculate the probability, your probability value, you you get some values, maybe negative values, or maybe greater than one value. So that situation, you think about, you did some mistake for your probability calculation. So this probability satisfy any situation or any example, any data. So this is actually theoretically we, we can prove that probability less than one and greater than zero or equal to zero or equal to one. Okay. So next we are going to discuss about some basic approaches to computing probability. So first approach one, subjective probability. So the probability of event A is estimated by using an individual personal judgment of the relevant circumstance. For example, James thinks the probability that Chamber World will beat Rocket this weekend is 70% chance. So this is actually one of the particular person judgment 
so this is first approach so maybe i think maybe 100 years back if these people use this approach for that probability calculation but nowadays we have some several standard method for that probability calculation so this is approach one so relative frequency approximation this can take or observe the procedure in times and the number of times event a actually occurred is s so it's time that event occurred and also we conduct to observe that procedures this repeated in times so based on this actual result probability of a is approximately follows probability of a approximately is divided by n so nowadays we will use this expansion of this result this approach this relative frequency approximation approach so we developed some standard method for that probability calculation all right so for example this is example for relative frequency probability calculation in 2009 there were 10.8 million vehicle accidents in the united states 33,800 people involved in the accident died within 30 days so based on the data from the 2012 statistical abstract the probability of the accident death rate in 2009 can be approximated as this one this is just approximate probability calculation for just application of relative frequency probability calculation okay all right so third approach the scans classical approach to probability so nowadays we nowadays we use this approach this probability is request pre assumed chance of the outcomes so I assume that given procedure case and different simple event and that each of the simple event case an equal chance of occurring. So if event A can occur in of these n ways, then we can try probability of A is equal. So this is the notation probability of A is equal S divided by N. So this is in this case that N different simple event. So that means number of total outcomes or number of total element in sample space that is n this number of element in particular event s so this is the probability okay so maybe in most of the situation we use this formula for our probability calculation so this is a simple example in spring 2011 minnesota state university manga had enrolled 719 international students based on the population statistic from msu to international students and scholars service the total enrollment was about 15,000. the probability that randomly searching msu student is an international student and we calculate that just to apply that directly after that probability equation so 719 divided by 1500 so that should be equal 0 0.0048 okay all right so this is one of the ones for another example so on the first date Hilly asked mike to guess the month of her birth not including the year and date so what's the probability that mike will guess correctly so in this case that probability calculation so here they mentioned this month of her e birth so in this case actually the probability this total possible outcomes 12 we have total 12 months so this particular person clearly asked mike to guess the month so this birth month is maybe january or february or march up to december so this is one of the particular month so that means probability one over 12 okay all right so next section relationship among the events so relationship among the events this section we are going to discuss this relationship among the event based on some event diagrams so already everybody familiar that event diagrams so let's see so first we are going to discuss about subset or sub event so subset or subset so subset a subset is portion of the set so actually the subset is the portion of the set for example a is subset of b so usually we 
written as a substitute b so this is the notation if and only if if every member of a is a member of b which means that occurrence of a will lead to the occurrence of b so a subset of b so in this case this is because bigger set a subset of b so and also you know this a and b are one of the events in sample space so we can try this this is that uh, when diagram explanation so this is that event a this is that event b so in this case this is a subset of b so if you consider any element belongs to a if and only if that element also belongs to b so that is subset or sub event all right so this simple example so we consider this example 3.3 so that means just we consider three times to single coin so in our sample space contain eight elements if an event a is defined as one head in three tosses so exactly one head so that means maybe if you write out that event space so this event a this event space only exactly one head so maybe possible G G H O G H T O H T T. and another event b is defined there at least one head so at least one head mean maybe exactly one head or two head or all our heads okay so if you write on that event space in b this that event space so in this case this obviously we know these three events belongs to this event so this is a is obviously a part of b so a subset of b okay so this is simple example so next complementary event so complement is the opposite event or event which does not include the elements of the event on of interest but include the rest of the element of the sample space so let us consider a bar is the complement event a so usually we denote the standard notation a bar is the complement event of a or some of the textbooks use this different notation maybe a complement a, a prefix c that's also maybe some of the textbooks use the notation so for example if in not the probability of rain is 20 percentage chance or 0 0.2 the probability of then probability of complement that means not drain is 80 percentage chance or 0 0.8 so that means 1 minus 0 0.2 okay so this is a simple example so this complementary event so this is maybe we can directly we can write down that complementary probabilities probability of a complement should be equal 1 minus probability of a all right, so this is a simple example. This is event A. So this is event A. So this is sample space. So this is A complement. This is A complement. Okay. So this blue sided colors. This is A complement. So this is the explanation based on Venn diagram. All right. So this is uh, the mathematical uh, explanation. So the same example in example 3.3. So just three example 3.3 mean just we consider three times tossing a coin. So if an event A is defined as one head in three tosses, such that A is equal to H H T H T or H T T, then the complement of A is a complement is equal. So the event space A complement should be equal this one. So probability of A complement is equal one minus probability of A. So we have probability of A treats as probability of the uh, event. So probability of A is equal to eight over three. So probability of A complement is equal to five over three. Okay. All right. So next union. The union of two events is the event which includes the events of the either each event are both event so let us consider a union b this is the notation a union b be the union of the event a and b so that means if we consider any element belongs to a union b if and only if that element belongs to a 
O that element belongs to B. Okay. So in this case, this A union B, this that A union B. Okay. All right. So this is the simple example for A union B. So we define this A is exactly one hit. So this is this event base and another B event defined as hit in the third cross. So that event B space is equal to this. So A union B mean we have to write on all elements, this A and B. So that mean A union B is equal to this event. Okay. So we can write probability of A. You know our sample space contains total eight elements. So probability of A is equal. Here we have three elements in this event space A. So probability of A is equal to three by H. And probability of B is equal to four by H. And also probability of A union B is equal to six over H. Okay. All right. So next we are going to discuss intersection. The intersection of two event is the event which include the element comment on e both the events. Let us consider a intersection B. So there is this is an annotation a intersection B with the intersection of the events A and B. So this a intersection B, this is that event A, this is that event B. So in this case we denote this as this A as blue color and B event B as yellow color. So that intersection area is equal this one okay so and also alternative we can say in the definition will be intersection suppose one of the events or one of the element a belongs to or x belongs to a intersection b even only if that x belongs to a and x belongs to b okay so there's an intersection so let's see one simple example so three times tossing a coin if an event A defined is exactly one head in three toss and event B defined uh, head in the third toss. So this is the event space B, this is the event space A. So the intersection A and B, so actually the intersection means common element. So in this case the common element TTH as common element. So this TTH, this element belongs to A and it belongs to B. So that means A intersection B is equal to TTH. So we can write probability of A is equal to 3 by 8, probability of B is equal to 4 by 8, and also probability of A intersection B is equal to 1 over H. Okay. Alright, so next mutually exclusive or disjoint event. So events are known as mutually exclusive or disjoint event when there is no common element or element among the event so specifically two events a and b are known to be mutually exclusive or disjoint if probability of a intersection b is equal to zero so that means that a intersection b should be equal empty okay so for example in our previous example probability of a intersection b is equal to one over eight so actually this is not equal to zero so that means this situation this a and b are not mutually exclusive event so suppose in exam times, if they ask uh, any given some two events or three events, so just to verify that these two events are mutually exclusive or not. So that situation, first we have to calculate the probability of A intersection B, just to check whether that is equal to zero or not. So suppose that is equal to zero, your answer, just this is mutually exclusive or otherwise not. Okay. All right. So this is that based on Venn diagram explanation. So uh, this is that event A, this is that event B. So in this case, we don't have any common element for event A and event B. So disjoint event or mutually exclusive event. All right. So next addition rule. So that addition rule. So addition rule, the identity, probability of A union B should be equal probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of a intersection b 
so we can use this addition tool for any situation any probability calculation case that means union probability of union of two events is equal probability of first event plus probability of second event minus probability of intersection of two events so example a uh, previous example if we calculate the probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of a intersection b that should be equal 6 over h so actually this also equal probability of a union b all right so suppose this event a and b are mutually exclusive or disjoint so that situation probability of a intersection b is equal to zero so probability of a intersection b is equal to zero mean these terms close to zero so that means probability of a union b is equal to probability of a plus probability of b so there is a special situation suppose if they given this event a and b are mutually exclusive or disjoint event we can try it probability of a union b is equal to probability of a plus probability of b okay all right so this is one of the an example so a defined is exactly one here so this is the event space and another event c define two heads in three tosses so i mean maybe possible event space c is equal to h h h t h a h h t the union of a and c suppose if we write out the event space a union c this is the a union c but in this case we don't have any common element for a and c so that means probability of a intersection b c should be equal to zero so that means a intersection b is equal to m t so probability of a is equal to 3 by 8 and probability of c is equal to 3 by 8 so in this case this is close to zero that, that means probability of intersection c is equal to zero so probability of a union c is equal to probability of a plus probability of c that should be equal to 6 by 8 okay all right so next section conditional probability so that conditional probability so that is very important so maybe we will later we will discuss that base law and total probability theorem so those theorems are uh, just modified from conditional probability or maybe we can say this application of conditional probability all right first we are going to discuss the definition of conditional probability the concept conditional reduces or changes of the sample space and probabilities are computed based on the reduced or changed sample space so probability of b given a denotes the conditional probability of event b occurring given that event a has already occurred so this is just notation so here important this not deficient notation this is conditional probability notation so that's we we can treat that conditional probability that event b occurring given that event a has already occurred so it can be found that by dividing the probability of event a and b both occurring by the probability of event a so this is that formula so we can directly we can use that formula for this conditional probability calculations so probability of b given a should be equal probability of a intersection b divided by probability of a so actually in this case this is the fraction form this is the fraction form so this denominator term should be equal a given condition probability given okay and also you know we can write a intersection b also equal b intersection a so maybe we can write this one uh, so this is a simple example in example 3.3 so that means three times tossing a coin the conditional probability of head in the third toss given that one head in three trusses is one over three so because this under the condition that one head in three trusses the reduced sample space a is equal so this is the sample space that reduced sample space because in this case they already they given that one head in three toss so that reduced sample space exactly one head in three toss and also a question may be a conditional probability of head in the third toss head in the third toss mean only possible for this one so that means this conditional probability should be equal one over three 
and one of the three equally likely simple event of caffeine cat in the third class. Okay. Maybe we can use that our formula. So we, we can write this this that event A, this that event B. So we can calculate the probability of A intersection B. So A intersection B being in this case we have this is the common element A and B. So that means A intersection B is equal. Yes, only we have one element. So the probability 1 over 8. And probability of A is equal to 3 over 8. So that probability is equal. Conditional probability should be equal to 1 over 3. So this is exactly the same for our previous B calculation. Okay. But most of the situation we use that formula. So that is an easy way. Okay. So next to multiplication rule. So that multiplication rule. So this is just expanded from a conditional probability law. So our conditional probability law said probability of B given A is equal probability of A intersection B divided by probability of uh, A. Okay. So we can write that from that equation probability of A intersection B is equal probability of B given A into probability of A. Or otherwise, also there is equal probability of A given B into probability of B. Okay, that's why you know probability of A intersection B also equal probability of B intersection A. Okay, so we can use this way too. So maybe some of the situation this application, this multiplication rule application is useful. Alright, so this this simple example, these two cards are drawn from a standard deck of 52 playing cards without replacement. So without replacement, in suppose if you pick one card, so from the 52 cards, then second time you have to one card from 51 cards, okay, without replacement. So the deck consists of 13 clubs. 13 diamonds, 13 heads, and 13 spades. So, what is the probability that both the heart are heads? So, in this case, maybe we can apply that multiplication rule. So, probability of A intersection B. Suppose if we define that A is one of the events indicated, first card is head, and B is another event, second card is head. So, in this case, our question: What is the probability that both of Hearts are head, so that means A intersection B. So the mean probability of first selected heart and second also selected heart. So A intersection B. So just apply that multiplication rule. So we can write this one. Probability of A. So that mean first selected card head. So total we have 52 cards. So in 52 cards set 13 heads. So this probability of A is equal to 13 divided by 52. And second multiply by probability B given A. So that means probability of second selected card head given that first selected head. So that means in this case this is without replacement. So after first event occurred, so second situation we have total 51 cards. And already we selected one head. So we have remaining 12 cards, 12 heads. So that's this probability 12 divided by 51. So that should be equal 1 over 17. Okay. So this is one of the example for multiplication tool application. This is the end of the example uh, for application of conditional probability. So in this case, there are following from the 100 senators from 108th Congress of United States. So they are given here two political parties, Republican and Democrat, and also two gender type, this male and female. So in this case, they consider this 46 Republican male and 39 Democrat male, and Republican five female, and in Democrat ten female. So if we randomly select one senator, what is the conditional probability of getting female? given that Republican was selected. So in this case, this is the given condition. So total we have 100 senators. 
so suppose if we calculate the sum of this first second column so 51 so we have total 51 republican and uh, 49 Democrat and similarly we can calculate 15 female and uh, 80 15 yeah 85 male so in this case they given that Republican was selected so we have total 51 Republican so question conditional probability getting female so given that given that mean this Republican was selected so that means in this case just only our reduced sample size contain 51 outcomes so that means first maybe probability should be equal 5 over 51 okay well, otherwise we can use that our basic formula so we can write down that first recall that event a is first event and event b is another event so in this case maybe we can define this a is the uh, selected to, uh, senator is female and b is the selected senator republican okay so then we can calculate that intersection probability of intersection B and probability of then we can use it. Okay, so this is end that way. All right, so part B, if we randomly select one senator, let A, A be the event that the selected senator is a female, and B be the event that selected senator is Republican. So our question are the event A and B are mutually exclusive. So actually in this case, first we have to calculate that probability of A intersection B. So suppose that value is equal to zero, then we can say this event A and B are mutually exclusive or disjoint, or otherwise not. Okay. So actually in this case, maybe we can calculate some values. So that probability of A intersection B is equal to some exist probability. So actually in this case is not mutually exclusive event. All right. Right, so next based rule. So based rule application, this is also very popular in probability calculation in industrial field. So let us consider that sample space S is divided into three mutually exclusive partition S1, S2 and S3. So that means S1 intersection S2 empty and S2 intersection S3 empty and also S1 intersection S3 also empty. And an event A, event H has occurred. So that means H is one of the common event for event partition S1, S2, S3. Then we can write that probability of H is equal probability of H intersection S1, H intersection S2 plus H intersection S3. Okay. So probability of S1 given H can be written as probability of S1 given H is equal to first I apply that conditional probability law. So probability of S1 intersection H divided by probability of H. So then we can write probability of H is equal to this one. Okay. So finally we can write probability of S1 given H is equal probability of H given S1 into probability of S1 divided by this one. Okay. So actually this is maybe for example, you are one of the company manager. Okay. So you receive shipment from three different suppliers, S1, S2, S3. Okay. So each supplier's product has some of the defective items. Okay. So in this case, maybe we can consider S1, S2, S3 are suppliers. This H is the common event, so that is defective. Okay. So we can calculate the probability of defective item is equal probability of H intersection S1. So that means H intersection S1 means first suppliers and defective. Second supplier, defective. Okay. So after mix this all segments. So suppose if you want to calculate, just randomly pick one item, one defective item. Okay. What's the probability that that item came from first supplier or second supplier? Okay. So usually these probabilities directly we don't know that this probability, but these probabilities are we can manually we can calculate. 
okay so maybe that's the division maybe we can use that base rule all right so maybe later we will discuss some several examples here so hopefully you can easily understand through the examples all right so this is the Venn diagram for base rule so this partition s1 s2 s3 are three partition in sample space so also mutually exclusive for this joint event so h is the common event so this rule can be generalized for any finite number so to a more partition so an ultrasonogram machine identify 50.17 percentage of the baby's s by a baby's boy when ultrasonogram identify boy in 99.47 percentage of the times and a baby's girl when ultrasonogram identify girl in 99.83 percentage of the time a baby born scales what is the probability that baby was predicted to be boy so in this case we define s1 predicted boy s2 predicted girl and h common event born girl okay so in this case the set percentages are very very important so first if you write down that in notation format then maybe we can easily figure out this problem so an ultrasonogram machine identify 50.17 percentage of the babies as boy in second sentence a baby is boy when ultrasonogram machine identify boy is 99.47 percentage and third one baby is a girl when ultrasonogram identify girl a question baby born is girl what's the probability that baby was predicted to be boy okay so then <coughs> first if you write on an notation so a question asking probability of s1 given h and also the given probability of s1 is equal 0.5417 s2 is equal 1 minus 0.5417 so that means in this case only just we have just only two possibilities this predicted boy or predicted girl okay so and then also the given probability of h given s1 and probability of h given s1 is equal 1 minus that one that means born girl and predicted to be boy but in this case they given 99.47 percentage born boy when predicted to be boy okay all right so probability of h given s2 0 0.9983 born girl when predicted to be girl this directly they given this probability but in this case this probability they given 0 0.9947 is born born girl when predicted to be boy so then directly we can apply that based rule then we'll get that answer okay so directly write on that formula then as substitute everything then we will get that answer that is easy all right so this is the another example so three plants c1 c2 and c3 is produced uh, respectively 10 percentage and 50 percentage and 40 percentage of company output although plant c1 is small plant it is manager believes high quality so that means was just only one percentage the product are defective so that means this conditional probability of defective given c1 should be equal 0 0.01 okay so similarly c2 three percentage and c3 four percentage okay so these are conditional probabilities so all product are sent out central warehouse one item is selected at random and observed to be defective then what's the conditional probability that it's come from plant c1 so in this case suppose if we define that event d as defective then we can write on probability of c1 probability of c2 probability of c3 and also we can write probability of d given c1 d given c2 d given c3 okay all right so the answer may be 1 over 32 And also maybe you can try that question maybe if you want to that answer so if you need any help just comment um, through this below that video i'll explain or i'll provide that whole answer for you okay 
so in next independence so independence also maybe some of the situation independence also used for so there's two events a and b are independent if probability of b given a so that means there is no relationship between occurring event a and occurring event b so there is no relationship between the two events so there is independent so, so those are separate events so probability b given a is equal to probability of b or probability of a given b is equal to probability of a or otherwise maybe we can write probability of a intersection b is equal probability of a into probability of b so this is very useful and also very popular so suppose two events a and b are independent we can try to probability of a intersection b is equal to multiplication of these two probabilities okay so example this on our earlier example probability of b given a is equal 1 over 3 and probability of b is equal to 1 half so actually this obviously this is not equal so not independent okay so that means not independent mean these events are dependent okay all right so this is the last section of this slides for presentation so this counting so counting principle so in this section we are going to briefly discuss about that counting principle and also finally we'll use that counting principle or counting uh, technique for probability calculation okay so maybe later we will discuss maybe uh, hopefully maybe next video we will discuss some distributions so that's the division we will discuss this one of the discrete type distribution hypergeometry distribution so hypergeometry distribution case will use this counting principle is very popular okay and also this is very interesting topic all right so first of all what's the counting often the multiplication principle is used such as one intent to travel from point u to point v via point w for example this is u this is v this is w okay so one of the uh, can indicate here u to v okay so we are point w so that means u to w w to v okay so from point u to u to point w can be traveled in r different ways so we have r different ways to travel u to w and t different ways t to v so then we can calculate the total number of possible ways for travel from u to v that should be equal r into t different ways okay so this is very popular for in your real life so everyday application this most of the time we use this multiplication tool okay so this simple example so we have three airports so msp and pbg and ort so there are 44 flights between msp and ort and two flights between ort and pbg so then maybe total he has total 88 different sites travel from msp to okay so this is that simple uh, example for application of counting principle all right so next factorial so factorial this is the factorial of number of product uh, of all the whole numbers from the number down to one the factorials of zero is defined to be one so this is factorial mean usually we denote this as uh, five factorial mean this is the notation five factorial so that means five into four into three into two into one similarly 10 factorial mean 10 into 9 into 8 into 7 into up to 1 okay so this is the factorial so this reading in mathematically we can call that is five factorial okay all right so these are just uh, several slides I, I think maybe following maybe four or five slides we'll discuss some general question or general application of counting principles so how many different license plates are there contain exactly three english letters so license plates are there exactly three english letters so that means 
this is the license plate so three English letters okay so may, maybe first possibility is for 26 possible way and second 26 and similarly third one also 26 possible ways so that means total number of possible ways 26 into 26 into 26 so there should be equal 17,576 different license plates okay Final sequence of any four digits. So this is the end of the example. So this fin in may be possible zero also maybe initial point also zero also possible. So first question may be repetition a lot. So that means we have nine possibilities for first one and second nine possibility, third one nine possibility, fourth one nine possibility. So first to answer may be nine into nine into nine into nine. And repetition are not a lot so that means first if you have nine several ways and second eight several ways and third one uh, seven several ways and last one six several ways okay so these are that symbol all right so this is the another example how many different uh, seven place license plates are possible first three places are to be occupied by letters and final three four by number so then you can write that correct answers then maybe if you uh, need any help for if you need these answers then just comment through this video i'll explain or i'll provide whole answer for you okay uh, okay so Actually, I also given that answers here too. So first, you can try that question. Okay. So then, maybe if you have any trouble, please let me know. So in this case, also first one is repetition a lot, and second one repetition not a lot. So that situation, repetition not a lot case, this may be a different answer. Okay. Well, this is another example for you. So how many ways are there? Are five people in? This class to give strat 154 course presentation. There are 30 students in this class, session 9. Okay. So, Alright, so how many uh, different letters arrangement can be made from letters? So in this case, that's letter arrangement. So first, first of all, we have to uh, make sure uh, and identify that how many different letters or maybe some of the situation this exactly uh, each letters as different different letters maybe some of the times maybe some of the letters case two times so repeated or three times repeated okay so in this case this first example this fluke so this word can change five letters so each letters are different f one time l one time u one time k one time so this total number of possible ways five factorial okay and second example propose so in this case this is p two times o two times or one time s one times e one times so that means in this case actually this total number of possible ways total we have uh, seven letters so seven factorial divided by two factorial into two factorial okay because P is P two times or two times, and third one Mississippi. So in this case, total we have eleven letters, but S four times, I four times, and P two times. So four fact eleven factorial divided by four factorial into four factorial into two factorial. Okay, and fourth one arrange so seven factorial. We have total seven letters, so seven factorial divided by two factorial into two factorial. All right, so next to permutation. The number of ways in which subset of object can be selected from given set of object where order is important. So in this case, this order is very important. So for example, uh, given a set of three letters, this a and b comma a comma b comma c so how many possibilities that they are selecting any two letters so where is order is important so we can write this six possible ways okay this is a general form these are different items 
without repression from n different i terms can be arranged in n into n minus 1 up to n minus r plus 1 different ways. So this way of counting is all known as permuting or permutation. Or arranging that means r different items from n different items. So this number of arrangement. So n p r n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. Okay. So that is permutation. This r number of item, r different items arranged from n different number of items. Okay. And also this, you know, that n factorial mean n into n minus 1, n minus 2 up to 3 into 2 into 1. And also 0 factorial should be equal to 1. Okay. So this simple example, two different items could be arranged from four different items. So maybe possible answers is 4p2 or 4 into 3 12. Or otherwise, you can use the permutation formula for p2. Okay. So five different items can be arranged among themselves in five into four into three into two into one or five P five. Okay. So this is a simple example uh, for the permutation uh, combination. So this is very, very important. This combination, the number of ways in which subset of object can be selected from given set of objects where order is not important. So in this case, the probability calculation case, this combination is very useful because this is just, for example, we have 30 students in this class. So how many possible ways for selecting five students from the 30 students group? So that's the equation we can use that combination formula. Okay. So given simple examples, given a set of three letters, this A comma B comma C, how many possibilities are there for selecting any two letters where order is not important? So A, B, or A, C, or E, C. In this case, your selection, not order is important. Okay. So this general form are different items without repetition from n different items can be selected in C, R. So that means we define that in C, R n factorial divided by n minus r factorial into r factorial okay so ncr is obtained actually this ncr obtained by npr by r factorial so meaning the number of is lowered by factor of r factorial the number of ways r different items could be arranged among themselves okay a simple example you need two people on your committee and you have total five this was from so you can see that it's the without repetition because the you can only choose the person once the order doesn't matter you need two committee members but it can change that it doesn't matter which solution first so how many combination are there so in this case this first we are finding this uh, indicate that each people's are different different colors so we have total five people people so you need to select two people from this five people group so that possible ways so total 10 possible ways so suppose if you apply that this is first this is that graphical way okay so suppose if you apply that combination probability 5c2 total we have five people you are going to select two people from five five people so 5c2 so that is equal to 50 10 okay all right so and the example two different items could be selected from four different items so that answers maybe for c2 or maybe you can use that our basic uh, can combination definition okay so six different ways and five different items can be selected from five different items so that mean five c5 that should be equal to one okay all right so and also in this combination case this ncr always equal nc n minus r okay so maybe we can verify that answers based on similar example 5c2 also equal 5c3 
Similarly, chain C7 also equal chain C3. Okay. So maybe some of the situation this is useful for directly you can use that uh, this application. Okay, so this is the end of the example. Two men and two women from firm will attend a conference if the firm has ten men and nine women. So that firm has ten men and nine women. So two men and two women from firm will attend the conference. So we have to select two men from ten men group and two women from nine men women group. Okay. So how many different ways can select conference attendees? So stage one first select the two women from nine available women group. So that means nine C2. So that is equal to 36 possible ways. Similarly, two men from two ten men group. So 10 C2 possible 45. Then apply that multiplication tool 36 into 45 should be equal 1062 or so 1620 number of different ways for selecting uh, two men and two women from 10 men and nine women group. Okay. This is another example. A basketball team consists of two centers, five forward and four guard. In how many ways can coach select starting line up to one center, two forward and two guard? So in this case also, we can apply that multiplication tool and um, combination. So 2C1 into 5C2 into 4C2. So total 120 ways. Okay. All right. So this is the identification, permutation and combination. So both the number of ways selecting are items out of n items. So repetition are not a lot. And permutation case order is important, but combination case order is not important, just selection. Okay. And permutation mean arrangement of n items taken R at time. And combination means subset of n items taken R at time. Okay. And so NPR n factorial divided by n minus R factorial and NCR n factorial divided by R factorial into n minus R factorial. And also clue words, arrangement, schedule or order and combination case clue word group sample or selection okay so this that you know, is the identification for your these problems and also maybe you can use in your calculator gi 83 or 84 calculators uh, you can use that permutation for this option uh, npr and ncr okay so that mean NPR mean five. Just choose that NPR N3, so five P3. And similarly combination. So 10 C R mean use this N C R. Okay. So and three or eighty four or eighty four plus calculators has this option. Maybe different calculators has different options. So suppose if you need any help for that calculator calculation, let me know. I will explain. All right, so this is the one of the example for probability calculation. A group of 11 seniors, five juniors, and four summer peers have volunteered to be peer tutors. Mr. Dilaki needs to choose 12 students out of the group. How many ways can the 12 students be chosen? So that means in this case total we have and 16 students so without any restriction so how many possible ways they selected 12 students so 16 c 12 okay and second if the students are chosen randomly what's the probability that four seniors exactly four seniors exactly four juniors and exactly four summer peers so this probability case the denominator term 16 c 12 and numerator term 7 c 4 into 5 c 4 into 4c4 okay and third one if the student are searching randomly what is the probability that four seniors and juniors 
in at least three sum of years so in this case this is fixed but these are not fixed at least three sum of years mean at least three minimum three maybe three or four of yeah maximum we have four okay so suppose if you consider four sin sum of years juniors also four okay and suppose if you consider three sum of years this juniors five okay so in this case the denominator term exactly same for previous one 16 c 12 and numerator term just you have to calculate first 7 c 4 into 5 c 5 into 4 c 3 plus 7 c 4 5 c 4 4 c 4 okay so that's the probabilities so I also given that uh, final answers here okay so you can write then maybe if you need any help just comment mm, below this video okay. all right so this is the end of the example say a box contains 24 ancestors four of which are defective if who are sold at random find the following probabilities exactly two are defective all are defective or none is defective so at least one defective so this is that you have practiced so you can write okay so then maybe if you need any, any help then i can explain so this is the, uh, the example uh, so actually in this case there is not uh, application of uh, counting principle so actually this example for application of independence probability okay write yourself okay i also given these answers to here so you can try it so this is the trending position of this presentation so please don't forget to subscribe my channel uh, thanks for watching my video so in future also maybe in hopefully maybe in our next video uh, we'll briefly discuss about some discrete type distribution and also continuously i will explain this every statistics section so especially maybe later we will discuss some uh, mathematical calculation this everything step by step okay so see you on next video so please don't forget to subscribe my channel thanks thanks for everyone thank you